What's up, guys? We're back at it with a brand new Saltwater Fish Top 10, but this one is a little bit different. And we're going to be taking a look at the Top 10 Cultured Saltwater Fish from Biota. Now, the importance of this is that Biota Aquariums is now selling direct to hobbyists. Years past, if you wanted to pick up some aquacultured fish from Biota, you would have to go through a second-hand vendor, whether it was Live Aquarium or some other online vendor. That's how you had to do it. But that is no longer the case. All you need to do is jump over to the website. It's actually not that easy to find, but I have put a link in the description for you guys below if you want to check that out. And I've also talked about this on a recent episode of the Saltwater Aquarium Radio Podcast, and I'll put a link to that in the description as well. So if you're interested in the subject, want to dive a little bit deeper, there'll be a link for that episode in the description below. But before we jump into the top 10 biota aquacultured fish, we're going to talk about the one that didn't make the cut, and that is the orange tail damsel. Now, first things first, this fish is beautiful and damsels sometimes are relatively pretty but this guy takes the cake he is absolutely stunning but with that being said a damsel is a damsel is a damsel and they are not very friendly fish and often new hobbyists kind of get sucked into the damsel trap they find a very hardy fish to start their aquarium and then they kind of get stuck because these guys are so aggressive and establishing a damsel before any other fish is definitely a bad decision. Coming in at the number 10 spot on our top 10 biota aquacultured fish is the white spotted dwarf goby. Now this fish is not your typical goby that you're going to see in a nano tank. And yes, right off the bat, we're going to talk about this being a fish for a very small tank. They are considered easy to care for, have a peaceful temperament, carnivore-based diet, are considered reef safe. They grow upwards of just over an inch, not very big at all. So it's definitely an ideal fish for a small aquarium. And because this guy is so small, that's what makes it such a great candidate for a nano tank. Absolutely beautiful, not a bad price tag, and definitely rare. Check out the white-spotted dwarf goby. Coming in at the number nine spot on our top 10 is the Hawaiian cleaner ras. Now, this guy is considered difficult care level, and that has a lot to do with their diet. They are known for eating pests and parasites off from larger fish, and they often set up a cleaner station, much like a shrimp does in a reef tank. And because this fish is a aquaculture fish, it's much more adapted to aquarium life which is going to give you a much better shot at keeping this fish alive and happy they are peaceful have a carnivore based diet are considered reef safe and require a minimum tank size of about 50 plus gallons and can grow upwards of five inches absolute beautiful fish i remember the first time i ever saw one and they are incredibly gorgeous check it out the hawaiian cleaner wrasse Coming in at the number eight spot on our top 10 biota aquacultured saltwater fish, and that is the Aptasia eating filefish. Decent price on these guys, 30 bucks. They are considered reef safe, have a peaceful temperament, grow upwards of two inches, and can fit in the tank about 30 gallons or larger. Now, for tank mates, it's very important to make sure that you put this fish with not aggressive fish because they are incredibly slow swimmers. Uh, they're not going to do well with fish that potentially could pick on them. So that's definitely something that you need to take in consideration if you're going to purchase this fish. Now let's get into its eating habits. Aptasia eating file fish. That's exactly what it's going to do. It's going to eat Aptasia. So if you have a nano tank and are struggling with Aptasia in your system and you've tried a number of different other avenues and it's not working out for you, this might be the guy that's going to help you out and get Aptasia out of your tank. But that raises a pretty interesting dilemma because you need to think through how you're going to feed this guy once all of the Aptasia has been removed from your system because it would be awful to have this guy in the tank and just starve him to death. Uh, so that's something that you need to think about prior to purchasing this fish. Have a plan. Make sure you can continue to feed it. If you can't, make sure you have a home for him once he's done in your tank. Coming in at number seven on our top 10 saltwater fish from Biota Aquariums is the Court Jester Gobi. Now this guy is moderate care level, has a peaceful temperament, 
omnivore-based diet is considered reef safe, grows upwards of three inches, and requires a minimum tank size of 10 gallons. Now, when we first started talking about this fish, we addressed the fact that it is a moderate care level fish. Now, I've tried to keep this fish in the past and actually have not had any success with it. But the fish that I had was a wild caught version of this fish. Now, with biota aquaculture fish, this is a fish that is born into captivity. So it is much more adapted to aquarium life, which is going to set it up for success. So in a lot of the information that you're going to find on the internet about this fish, it's going to say moderate care level. But because you're buying an aquaculture fish that is adapted to aquarium life, you're going to have a much better shot at keeping this fish and being successful with it. Coming in at number six on our top 10 saltwater fish from Biota Aquariums is the Royal Grama. Now this guy is easy to care for, has a peaceful temperament, carnivore based diet, is considered reef safe, can grow upwards of three inches and requires a minimum tank size of 30 gallons. Now what I absolutely love about this guy is it is absolutely stunning. But not only that, it is incredibly easy to keep, and that's what makes it a great fish for a beginner. So if you are still in that information collection stage and are looking for a visually stunning fish that is going to be easy to keep, I definitely recommend the Royal Grama. Coming in at number five on our top ten saltwater fish is the Black Ice Clownfish. Now this is a absolute stunning variation of the Black Ice. I have a Black Ice in the nano tank. And he doesn't look this good, so Biota is definitely putting out some solid black ice clownfish. They are considered easy to care for, have a peaceful temperament, omnivore-based diet, are considered reef safe, can grow upwards of 3 inches, and require a minimum tank size of 20 gallons. Still can't get over how beautiful this fish is. It's almost not just a black ice, it's almost like a frostbite slash black ice. Beautiful fish. Check it out, the black ice clownfish from Biota. Coming in at number four on our top 10 saltwater fish from Biota is the blotched Antheus. Now, this fish is absolutely beautiful. This picture actually doesn't do it justice. Uh, they are considered moderate care level, are semi-aggressive, have a carnivore-based diet, are considered reef safe, can grow upwards of six inches and require a minimum tank size of 125 gallons. I would definitely say that this picture doesn't do this fish justice. Its fins are absolutely phenomenal. And probably the most interesting thing about it to me is its eye. It's incredibly interesting looking. That little bit of black under the pupil. Stunning, beautiful fish. Definitely an expensive one. Check it out, the blotched Antheus. Coming in at number three on our top 10 saltwater fish from Biota Aquariums is the Blue Mandarin. Now, this is an absolute beautiful fish. Now, when you look at this price tag, don't let your jaw hit the floor. Uh, this is for a pair, which is actually a pretty decent price. These guys are considered moderate care level, have a peaceful temperament, carnivore-based diet, and that's really what makes this fish moderate care level. Uh, you definitely need to have a good amount of copepods in your tank and well established to keep these guys happy. They are reef safe, grow upwards of three inches and require a minimum tank size of 30 gallons. Beautiful, interesting fish, the blue mandarin. Coming in at number two on our top 10 saltwater fish from Biota Aquariums is the Coral Beauty. Now this guy, I may have to kick on the quarantine system and get it up and running because I think I may need to buy this guy. I think the water box needs a new fish. They are considered easy to care for, have a semi-aggressive temperament, omnivore-based diet. They are reef safe with caution. So it's definitely a fish that you need to make sure that he's not going to nip at corals if you have an established reef aquarium. So it may want to do a little bit of quarantine setup, then an observation process before adding him to your tank. He can grow upwards of four inches and requires a minimum tank size of 70 gallons. And coming in at the number one spot on our top 10 aquacultured saltwater fish from Biota is the yellow tang. Now this guy is easy to care for, has a semi-aggressive temperament, herbivore-based diet, is considered reef safe, can grow upwards of eight inches and requires a minimum tank size of 100 gallons. But the most interesting thing about a captive 
bread yellow tang is you're going to get a tang that is much smaller than what you typically see at the local fish store because there are length requirements for wild caught yellow tangs. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this one. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And if you want to learn more about aquaculture and saltwater fish, check this video out.